What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today we're gonna go over um, minimum result by adding parentheses to expression. So you're given a zero indexed string expression, which is like num1 and num2. And uh, num1 and num2 are like positive integers. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to add parentheses around um, these expressions of the plus sign. And uh, what we're trying to do is we are trying to get the smallest possible value after you add parentheses. Um, so the left parentheses must be added to the left of the plus sign and the right parentheses must be added to the right of the plus sign. And so then uh, return the expression after adding a pair of parentheses such that the expression of values to the smallest possible value. If there are multiple answers that yield the result, return in them. Okay, so what this means is like, here if I, show you guys real quick. So let's say we're given the statement um, two, four, seven, and then we have plus 38, plus 38, right? Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to place like parentheses around this, right? So we're trying to place parentheses around um, the expressions and um, yeah we're, we're trying to get the smallest possible value after evaluating so in this case the uh, output is f here the this would be the best optimal place to place the parentheses because what happens is that 47 plus 38 would give you 85 and 85 times 2 so this gives us 85 and then 85 times 2 gives us uh, 170. And 170 is the smallest possible value evaluating this expression, putting the parentheses there. So, yeah, so there's other ways you could place the parentheses. Like, so let, let's say I place the parentheses here. So in this case, it would be like 24 times 10 times 8. And that's way greater than uh, 170. So th this number is like too large. So what we're trying to do is we're just trying to place parentheses so that we get the smallest possible value. And in that case, it was um, right next to 47 and 38. So there's some caveats. You cannot place it um, just next to a number. It has to be to the left and to the right. So what they're saying here is that we cannot place parentheses like that, right? We have to have parentheses to the left of the plus sign and to the right of the plus sign, okay? So yeah, um, 170 is the smallest possible value. So how would you do this problem? Um, so what I did, uh, honestly, I didn't, I didn't figure this problem out by myself. Um, I had to look at uh, what other people wrote. But ideally what you would do is um, you would look at this left side of this expression. We're just gonna split into different pairs. So we have two, four, seven, right? Um, so let's just split it between uh, two and 47. Right, so that's one pair you could have. Then you could have um, 24 and seven, so that's another pair. So note these are like, uh, these are like digits, right? These are like pairs of digits that you could have. And, um, and the last one you could have is uh, zero and two, four, seven, right? Because these are different pairs that you could have using each of these uh, digits, right? If I just, uh, different combinations. And the right side, is uh, 38, right? So let's split 38 into three and eight. And then we could split 38 with a zero. Okay, all right, you guys understand? All right, so um, what you could do is if you look at the observation of, we need to have a parentheses on the left side and the right side. So what that means is that, essentially is that um, we could like build we could go through every single combination of each of these pairs with the second number and just place parentheses around them. And then in the end, we just get the smallest number. Okay. So like in this case, if we have two, four, seven, three and eight, we could pair two, four, seven like this, right? Two, four, seven, three, and then eight. So here we would like add them and you could just multiply like that. And so that would, that would be one way you could put the parentheses, right? You would have here like this, right? So that would be like one way you could put the parentheses. Um, there should be like a one, 
Um, what we could do is like when there's a zero, we could actually just replace it with one, because uh, when you multiply, we, we don't want to multiply with zero, right? What really matters is that um, we're trying to get the left side to like if I place parentheses like this, it would be two four seven plus three times eight. So yeah, when the zero, this could be just be like a one, because one times two four seven plus three times eight would just be one of your answers. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, there's another way is that, um, so yeah, once we have all the pairs, we could just pair them up and try to get every combination of them and then just uh, evaluate each of them. So let's, let's say we have 247 and 38. We could just put these two here. So then this would be like 247, 38. So then what you would do is you would add both of these pairs inside together and multiply by two and this, this zero should be a one. So let's uh, change the zero to be a one. Right, and then we do that all that snaz. And then we could keep going, you know, we could just go through every single possible combination. We could do two, 738, which would be like this. And we just multiply this, add this, and then multiply this, make this max. And that'll be, that'll be an answer, that'll be a good answer. But yeah, okay, um, so yeah. So how would you do this in code? Um, simple. So first uh, we need to find, because they give us a string, we need to find the combinations, not the combination, we need to find the plus sign first because it's a string. And then after we have this plus sign, we could just convert the left side into like um, a number and the right side into a number, right? Using substring. So here, yeah, that's what I do here. So I have integer index, which I find the plus sign. Um, I have two pairs of vectors, which are arrays and they're pairs. So for the pairs represents each of these pairs of 0, 2, 4, 7, 2, 47, 24, 7, 3, 8, 3, 8, 0, right? Those are each pairs of displaying it. Left value, string left value, I can substring from 0 to index. And the reason why is because that's going to get 2, 4, 7 here. And a right value is substring from index plus 1. So that's substringing after the plus sign, right? So after the plus sign, I'm going to substring values after this, so that will give me 38. Okay, so that'll be the second number for right value. And then here, um, what I'm doing is I'm gonna loop through uh, each of the values in the left side. So for i equals zero, a left value dot size i plus plus. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push back, I'm gonna substring between each of the pairs, uh, each of the uh, values here, so if I have two, four, seven, I'm gonna pick this number two and then substring from there. So it would be like, I'll split it between two and then two, four, seven. So that'll be one pair. And then the next one, I'm gonna split it between 24 and seven. So that'll be another pair. And then finally, I could, I'll just split it between like two, four, seven and zero. Okay. So yeah, um, in this case, if S is equal to zero, so what this means is that if the first value is uh, the first of value is zero, right? What I'm gonna do, is, uh, set the second value. If the second value is zero, it means uh, I split from two, four, seven and zero. So this would mean I would have a two, four, seven and then zero on the right side. So this left side, zero on the right side. So that's splitting right here. So it'd be zero and two, four, seven. And I just add, I push back the opposite so I had zero first and then the first value. And the reason why is because I, I want it to be zero and two, four, seven first, right? I want, I want the zero to be first. So yeah, that's in that case, if the second number is zero, then I just pu push the opposite of S. And that's going to put um, the values into the vector pair, the pairs. Otherwise I just push back first and second and that's gonna give me um, each of these Substrings zero two four seven two forty seven twenty four seven, okay. And I do the exact same thing for the right side. Um, for the right side, I'm not gonna put zero first. I'm just gonna put thirty eight first and then zero, okay. All right, here's the part where it gets a little tricky. I'm gonna go through every pair now and just uh, check which has the smallest value. So to do that, um, so we have pairs x x one y one. So here. If I go here, I have x1. Uh, here's x1. 
and here's y1, and here's x2, and here's y2. So what I'm doing is I'm doing y, um, y1 plus y2, so both of these add, and then I'm multiply times y2 times x1. Okay, so that's what this is doing, right? That's a value evalu evaluating the value is going to equal to that. Um, here I do max of one and zero. Honestly, I should have just pushed one instead of zero, because that would made more sense. But um, but yeah, when you do max of zero and one, it's just going to give one. So this this is in the case if uh, the left side is a zero or the right side is zero, and that's not what I want. Right? I want I want it to have to evaluate it with one. So that's the evaluation I would want, right? Because I don't want this to be zero. Because if I if I pair two, four, seven, and three, so I pair these two up, add them up, this zero is going to cancel out the whole thing and make it zero. So I multiply it by the max of zero and one, so it gives me one on the left side. So yeah, I do that there. Um, then what I do is uh, if if my answer my v array is my answer array. So if my answer array is empty, so that's like the first iteration, I just set it equal to x1, y1, x2, y2. So that's going to set it equal to uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. And that's going to set like the first array that we're checking v to equal to that. And then later on, as the loop continues, we get the current value, which is literally the same thing. And if it's smaller than our current uh, our current value. If our value is smaller than current value, um, we uh, excuse me. We set the x one y one x two y two as a corresponding value. Okay, as a corresponding answer. So if it's uh less than the current value, so let's say I pair this these two up, right? So two four seven times uh two four seven plus three times eight, and uh, two four seven plus three times uh max of one. So this is gonna be one. Um, yeah. So the second line of code is just making sure if when I check the next one, two four seven plus thirty eight, multiply by two, multiply by one, max of zero and one is just gonna give me one. I'll I'll compare both of these and find the smallest one, and I'll just reset that equal to that. So that's what this is, because they want us to find the small, the smallest value, right? The smallest possible value. So for that, we have to just check, loop through, reset our variable to the new answer, the x1, y1, x2, y2, in case if our current value is not right. Um, yeah, so for this one, it's v of zero, v of one, v of two, v of three, because uh, if we make all these values into an array, um, so let's say I have two, uh, 247, 38, uh, I mean 247, 3, and 8, right? If we make that into the values of an array, um, it would be V, right? V is equal to this, and then the, the result would be 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? That will be your index, so that's why it's uh, max is V is 0, 1 times V of 1 plus V of 2 times max V3 of 1, and here it resets it. Okay, in the end, I need to actually add the parentheses. So I call to string on v of one, which converts the integer to a string. And I add the parentheses in the front. I do a plus and then two string of v of two and add parentheses in the back. So if, uh, if the v of zero is not equal to zero, that means is that the uh, v of zero is not equal to zero. So that, that's checking if the right side, v of zero is not equal to zero. So that's checking if the left side is a zero, right? So if it's not, if the left side is not zero, then we know we need to push back v of zero, which is a uh, two, right? We need to add, we have, we have to put add two to our string, okay? Um, if v of three is not equal to zero, so v of three not equal to zero. So that's uh, v of three, yeah. Excuse me. This is not equal to zero. Then we're gonna. That means we're on the right side of the middle. So we do plus two string of v three. 
Okay, and in the end, we just return middle. Okay, so this is like putting boundaries on the thing in case if uh, in case if some issue occurs. There's no zero, right? When there's no zero, and when there's no zero, we could put, uh, we don't have to put a zero there, right? So this is just putting parentheses and not putting zero. Okay, in the end, we just return middle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'm really tired. I'll check you guys out.